good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue reading out of this book, History Year by Year. And I had run a poll on my community tab asking which book series you wanted me to continue, and this was the clear winner, but I literally just went to go check on it and the Lost City's Ancient Tombs book had just went out. So, I guess I'll do that one after I do this one, I suppose. But let's just dive right in and get into the next chapter. It's not the one, let's see. We read all of this about the early man. So we're going to read about really ancient history. Let's follow this timeline and read about history. So starting in 3000 BCE, the first state. In Egypt, pharaohs created the world's first state. The king was seen as divine, a living representative of the sky god Horus. Pharaohs were the first rulers to wear crowns. Also in 3000 BCE, Stonehenge. In Britain, farming people began to build Stonehenge a ceremonial center aligned with the midwinter sunset. It began as a circular ditch and bank. The first stones were erected in 2600 BCE, followed by larger uprights with horizontal stones in 2500 BCE. How Stonehenge was used remains a mystery. Also, in 3000 BCE, we have Chinese towns. Along the Yellow River, people built the first large walled towns in China. The Longshan people, named after the town where the first excavations took place, made beautiful pottery and silk textiles from moth cocoons. Let's move down the timeline to 2800 BCE, Corral. The earliest American civilization developed in Peru. The people of the Norte Chico civilization built the first large towns in the Americas. One of the biggest was Caral, which had huge ceremonial platform mounds. And I think that's it for the timeline on this page. Let's read some of these boxes. This first one from 2628 to 2181 BCE, the Old Kingdom of Egypt. During the Egyptian Old Kingdom, a series of pharaohs built the largest stone tombs in history. Each pyramid tomb acted as an eternal home for the dead king, and a place where he was thought to change into an immortal god. The tallest of them, the Great Pyramid, stood at 481 feet kingdom of the Nile. The civilization of ancient Egypt grew up beside the desert along the banks of the Nile River. Each year the river flooded, depositing fertile soil along the banks where people were able to farm. The first period of ancient Egyptian civilization, known as the Old Kingdom, was a time of peace and prosperity. There's a map of this right there. Step Pyramid. You know, I've never seen his name spelled like that. Pharaoh Djoser uh, built the first pyramid with six step levels. One, two, three, four, five, six. This was the world's first large building made of stone. And, of course, the Great Pyramid. The largest pyramid of all was built by Pharaoh Khufu. Great Pyramid of Giza is the only pyramid to have the king's burial chamber high up in the tomb. And this box is about Mesopotamia from 4000 to 2000 BCE. The first great civilization emerged in Mesopotamia on the fertile flood plains of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The earliest dynasties were in the region of Sumer. The Mesopotamians are believed to have invented the wheel, the plow, and writing between two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. 
Euphrates. There's Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia means between the rivers and lay in roughly the area of modern Iraq. The region of Sumer is shown in pink. It's not pink. It looks more purple to me. Okay. The dotted line on the map shows shows the coastline at this time, which has retreated over the centuries. I'm like looking at this and reading. Do you see a dotted line? Oh, no, that's... Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Also, if you hear some static sounds, I don't know what that is. The, my headphones have been making that sound all night. It's quieted down. I don't know. If it gets really bad, I'll just edit it out. I apologize. Men of war. Unlike Egypt, Mesopotamia was not a single state, but was made up of city-states, each ruled by a king on behalf of a god. The cities competed for control and are thought to have recruited the first armies in history. Royal tombs. From 2600 BCE, the rulers of the city of Ur were buried in tombs filled with treasures and everyday items for the next life, such as this gaming board. And if I recall, the rules for this game have been lost, but to me it looks a lot like backgammon, doesn't it? Like a lot, a lot. It must have been like backgammon, but we'll never know. Into battle. This mosaic reveals how... 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, rival armies from city-states battled for supremacy. At the top, prisoners are dragged before the king, who has stepped down from his chariot. Let's see, there's the prisoners. There's the king. I think, oh no, that must be the king. He's the chariot driver. Below, ranks of infantry advance and other soldiers kill the enemy axis and lead away prisoners. Let's see. That looks like the army. Fight, fight. There goes the prisoners looking very ragged. At the bottom, soldiers in the chariots, each pulled by four donkeys, trample the dead. My goodness, there they go. Going over dead bodies without a care. Very interesting mosaic. We're gonna skip these sections because they're really long. At some point I'll go through them all and read them to you in a separate video, but not tonight because, like I said, they're really long. Let's continue the timeline down to 2500 BCE, Norte Chico. In Peru, the Norte Chico civilization continued to flourish, lasting until 1800 BCE. Unusually, for an urban civilization, the Norte Chico people did not make pottery. There's also no evidence of art. Moving down to 2334 BCE, the first empire. In Mesopotamia, King Sargon of the region of Akkad began his conquest of the region of Sumer, creating the world's first empire. As a result, Akkadian Semitic language related to Arabic and Hebrew Placed Sumerian as the language of Mesopotamia. There is King Sark. Moving down, down to 2200 BCE, Chinese Kingdom. According to legends, the first kingdom ruled by the Zha dynasty appeared in northwest China. It is thought to have been founded along the Yellow River by Yu the Great. 180 BCE, the end of the Old Kingdom. Following a period of famine caused by low Nile floods, the Egyptian Old Kingdom fell apart. A period of disorder followed, with many rulers governing different parts of Egypt. Moving to 2112 BCE, the Ziggurat of Ur. King Urnamu of Ur made his city the most powerful in Mesopotamia. He also built a great ziggurat temple dedicated to the moon god Nana or Sin. Ziggurat of Ur. Moving on to boom, 2100 
100 BCE, Minoan Prosperity. They're leaping over the bowl. Oops. My bad. <laughs> On the island of Crete, in the Mediterranean, the people we call the Minoans flourished. They built large palaces, including a particularly fine example at Knossos. These were also religious and industrial centers, with workshops for metal workers and other craftsmen. A wall painting from Knossos shows a ritual in which people leap over a bull and perform acrobatic stunts. It is thought that athletes would grasp the bull's horns and then vault over its back. Ta -da. Just like in regular gymnastics today, except the bull is not a real bull. <laughs> Moving on to... 2040 BCE, the Middle Kingdom. Mentuhotep II, ruler of Thebes, defeated his rivals and reunited Egypt, becoming the Middle Kingdom, which lasted until 1650 BCE. During this period, the cult of Osiris, god of the dead, became increasingly important. Let's see what this box says. This talks about the Indus civilization from 2500 BCE. In Pakistan and northwest India, a mysterious civilization that grew up by the Indus River was at its height by around 2500 BCE. Across the region, a uniform way of life was created with shared measurements and the same pottery styles. Here is priest king. There is no evidence of kings' organized religion in the Indus. However, archaeologists called the imposing statuette the priest king. And the priest king and dancing girl are two statues. Right? Again, no one knows if he's a priest or a king or just some guy with a really cool beard. The Indus lands. The Indus region was big enough to hold both Mesopotamia and Egypt. We know very little about it. We can't translate their language just like the Minoans we talked about down there. And here is Mohenjo-daro. Hindus people built the first large planned cities using standard sized bricks. Every house had its own water supply, bath, and toilet. This is a view of the ruins of Mohenjo-daro, the most important Hindu city in what is now Pakistan. Another box about first writing again. It's for another day. Moving on to 200 BCE, the Minoan seafarers. Look at this cool jug. That's neat. The Minoan civilization on the island of Crete dominated the eastern Mediterranean. The Minoans were great seafaring traders, exchanging Cretan goods such as olive oil, wine, and decorated pottery. Egyptian ivory and copper from Cyprus. They also founded trading settlements on other islands such as Carpathus and Thera, which is now Santorini. Minoan pottery was often decorated with marine creatures such as octopuses. Moving on to 1800 BCE, Peruvian advances. Major advances in northern Peru led to the introduction of pottery, last weaving and intensive farming. The population grew and new urban centers were built. Then we're going to it here. 1760 BCE, the Babylonian Empire. King Hammurabi of Babylon conquered Mesopotamia, creating a short-lived empire. He's best known for his law code inscribed on a stele that he had set up in public so all could see it. The carving shows him receiving his laws from Shamash, God of Justice. I've got to find that picture of me next to Hammurabi's code. I showed it a long time ago on my channel, like when it first started. And that video got like 20 views. I wound up scrapping it, but um, he's hey, bleep, 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 go away. I don't know what's making that sound anyway. Um, yeah. Moving on to 1650 BCE, Egypt invaded. The Hyksos, a people from Western Asia, conquered the Egyptian Delta, 
fighting from horse-drawn chariots later adopted by the Egyptians. And in also 1653, the Hittite conquers. The Hittites conquered an empire that encompassed most of Asia Minor, also known as modern-day Turkey. They rode into battle on chariots and were one of the first peoples to use iron from around 1550 BCE. They traded iron goods but kept the technology secret for three hundred years. Next, in 1628 BCE, the Thera eruption. A massive volcanic eruption on the Greek island of Thera buried Minoan settlements on the island also set off tidal waves that devastated the nearby islands and coastal settlements on Crete. Moving on to 1600 BCE to Mycenae. Now, I know some people say Mycenae because it's Mycenaean or Mycenae. Mycenae. I always say Mycenae. Let me know in the comments if that, that's definitely wrong because that's how I've always said it. Mycenae. The Mycenaean civilization rose to power in Greece. They were influenced by the Minoans, copying their art and fashions, but were much more warlike. They built fortified palaces and conquered Crete around 1450 BCE. That might be like a, a different English pronunciation because there's so many different forms of English. Maybe American English is Mycenae. Maybe in like England and Australia or something it's Mycenae. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to stick with Mycenae. In 1550 BCE, or at the new kingdom, Pharaoh Avmos drove Hyksos invaders out of Egypt, and a new period of rule began, known as the New Kingdom. Pharaohs ruling from Thebes later conquered an empire in Asia. It was a time of prosperity during which the huge temple complex at Karnak was built. Let's check out this box up here about Xing, China. Kings of the Shang Dynasty ruled China from 1600 BCE. People worshipped ancestors, and the massive gulf between rulers and ordinary people grew. When a king or noble died, he was buried with hundreds of slaves or prisoners executed by beheading to serve him in the next life. The burial customs. Found among the items in the Shang royal tomb were this chariot and the skeletons of two charioteers, I just noticed that when I said it, and the horses to pull it. Oh dear, I, I hope they were buried alive. It's awful. The Age of Bronze. The bronze industry flourished at this time. Skilled craftsmen made tools, weapons, musical instruments, and ritual items, such as this blade. Let's skip the Metal Ages. And to move on to 1500 BCE, moving down the line to 1400 BCE, we're at the Olmec. The first Mesoamerican civilization developed in the jungles of the north coast of Mexico. The Olmec built earth mounds and temples and carved colossal sculptures of the heads of rulers, ancestors, or gods, all wearing helmets. Moving on to... 1352 BCE, the sun worshipper. Pharaoh Akhenaten tried to make the Egyptian worship a single god, the Aten, or sun disk. He founded a new capital, Akhenaten, with open-air temples for worshipping the sun. After his death, around 1334 BCE, the old religion was restored. They were just like, he's gone, let's go back to how it was. Moving to 1046 BCE, the Zhao Dynasty. In China, King Wu of Zhao defeated the last Shang Emperor in battle and founded the Zhao Dynasty. Under the Zhao, ironworking was introduced to China. And then in 1000 BCE, we have the Aryans. Since the middle of the second millennium, a people called the Aryans had been settling in northwest India. They brought with them an early form of Hinduism. Most of what we know of them comes from their collection of religious poems, the Vedas. Their language, Sanskrit, is closely related to many European languages. Let's check out 
these boxes. The first one, 1302 to 1213 BCE, is Ramses the Great. Ramses the Second, known as Ramses the Great, ruled Egypt for 66 years. His long reign brought stability and prosperity to the Egyptian Empire, and he was a major figure in the Middle East. He even claimed to have defeated the threat from the Hittite Empire in the north single-handedly at the Battle of Kadesh. In fact, the battle was inconclusive. The father of many. It is said that Ramses had seven wives and fathered more than a hundred sons. His favorite wife was his first, Nefertari, whom he married at the age of fifteen. Famous face. Ramses built a huge number of monuments and temples, which often includes colossal statues of himself, such as the temple at Abu Simbel. And there's a box here about the Bronze Age collapse from 1250 to 1100 BCE. From 1250 to 1100 BCE, the Eastern Mediterranean was in turmoil. There was a mass movement of peoples looking for new lands to settle, and some of the great Bronze Age civilizations, including the Mycenaeans and Hittites, were violently destroyed by unknown enemies. Only Egypt was strong enough to fend off foreign invaders whom the Egyptians called the Sea Peoples. Here we see the Greek Dark Age. Sometime around 1100 BCE, Mycenae and the other fortified palaces in Greece were sacked and burned. A period now called the Greek Dark Age followed. The knowledge of writing was lost population levels fell. But Egypt endures. Pharaoh Ramses III defeated a great seaborne invasion by the Sea Peoples in the Nile Delta in 1178 BCE. Ramses had scenes of his victory carved on temple walls, showing a captive people called the Pelisset. They later settled on the coast of Canaan, where they gave their name to Palestine. We know them from the Bible as the Philistines. Very interesting. Hidden treasures. Here's this very famous picture of King Tutankhamen. King Tut. For seven years, archaeologist Howard Carter had been searching the Valley of the Kings in Egypt for the lost tomb of the little-known pharaoh named Tutankhamen. Then in November 1922, the team uncovered some steps leading down to a sealed door. Trembling hands, Carter made a tiny opening in the doorway and peered in by the light of a candle. Before him lay the greatest collection of Egyptian treasures ever discovered. Never before had a royal tomb been unearthed that had not been emptied by grave robbers. The treasures had remained in the tomb for three thousand years, ever since they were buried with the young pharaoh to Duncommon for use in the don't see a lot of photos of this image in bright colors like this. You can really see the gold, can't you? So bright. Imagine seeing this by candlelight. It must have been incredible. We'll read this another day too. Let's continue down the timeline to 1000 BCE, the city of Jerusalem. According to the Bible, Jerusalem was conquered by the Israelite King David. This painting shows the Ark of the Covenant, a portable shrine, being carried into the city. Right here. The Jews believe that the Ark held stone tablets inscribed with ten commandments written by God. Moving on to 965 BCE, Solomon's Temple. David's son Solomon built a temple in Jerusalem, a site still sacred to Jews today. After Solomon's death, the kingdom split into two, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Moving on to 800 BCE, making sure I haven't skipped anything, but I don't think so. 800 BCE, Chavin de Huantar. The Chavin civilization dominated Peru at this time. The most important site was Chavin de Huantar, a political and religious center filled with carvings of jaguars, eagles, and supernatural beings. On to 776 BCE, the 
the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games, held in honor of the chief Greek god Zeus, were first held in Greece. During the Games, people from all over the Greek world gathered to compete. Got to 753 BCE, the founding of Rome. According to Roman legend, Rome was founded by the twin brothers Romulus and Remus in 753 BCE. Archaeology shows that the city really began as a humble farming settlement in the 9th century BCE. You're telling me that the twin boys raised by a she-wolf didn't found its great empire by themselves. Seems a little sus. That's not what I was taught. <laughs> anyway, on to 750 BCE, the Greek colonies. The Greeks founded colonies around the Mediterranean and Black Seas. These include Massilia, now Marseille, France, Neapolis, now Naples, Italy, and Tripolis, now Tripoli, Libya. It's interesting, this and Palestine, how places got their names from very, 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 very old words. I like that. Let's check out the Assyrian Empire from 960 to 600 BCE. By the 9th century BCE, the Assyrians from northern Mesopotamia had become the most feared military power in the Near East. Their armies conquered both Judah, whose kings had to pay tributes of gold and silver, and Israel, whose people were resettled in Assyria. The Assyrians' as enemies, led by the Babylonians, later joined forces to destroy the Assyrian Empire. Let's check out the map. You can see just how far it stretched down there, from Egypt to Iraq. This map shows the Assyrian Empire in 670 BCE, when it stretched from Egypt to Iraq. Within the empire, peoples who rebelled against Assyrian rule were ruthlessly punished. And here is a lion hunt. Here's the lion. The Assyrians loved hunting as much as they loved warfare. This relief carving from the palace of Nineveh in modern-day Iraq shows King Ashurbanipal hunting lions from his chariot. I was going to say he looks like a king, but maybe every man in Assyria had beard and stuff, but nope. That's Ashurbanipal, the king. Oh gosh, that's the end. I thought this would be much longer. Oh well. <laughs> we'll end it there then. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found this video relaxing and educational. We'll continue this book later. I think it's so interesting. Thank you to the person who donated it from my Amazon wish list. Thank you again, and I hope that you have a very good